Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tasty Tuesday. I hope everyone's having a great day. I see some people already in the chat. Hi, Missy. And I will get to your question in just one second. Hey, John. Good morning. Tell Barry I said hi. Hi, Craig. How are you? Oh, yeah. And it's evening there. Well, it's evening here, too. It's so, do I have a cook with blue cheese dressing? I don't have anything that I can think of that I use blue cheese dressing in to cook with, but I do have a delicious blue cheese dressing recipe if you wanted to make your own homemade blue cheese. But I can't, can you think of anything that I have blue cheese that I've actually cooked with? I can't either. I almost want to say, yeah, but I. You know, like I'm not thinking of anything that we ever did a video on. Like a blue cheese sauce. I can't think of anything. No. It sounds good though. I might need to get that on the list. My ever ending list. So while we wait for a few people to come in, because if you are tuning in after the fact, okay, not live like we are right now at seven o'clock central time on Tuesday, April 11th. If you're tuning in afterwards, this is a live cooking show. So it's very different from the um, recorded videos that I post on YouTube. I get a lot of questions about that. So I just thought I would just throw that out there. You're going to hear me say hi to people, interact with people. It's totally different. Uh, some people love it. Some people don't like it. If you don't like this format, just don't watch it. It's perfectly fine. Um, hi, Juliet. How are you? Hi, Terry. Um, hi, Barbara. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Izel. Was it Izel? It's all. Yeah. It's sale. It's sale. Colin, do you have a better pronunciation? I would say you're probably close. It's sale or it's sale. Okay. I don't know. It's only. <laughs> um, hi, Gregory. How are you? Hi, Terry. Um, Okay, so Jerry's got a question here. This is not the Q and A. This is the this is the cooking show, but it's fine. I can take a question. Um, I'm trying the when Jeff puts them up on the screen, like oh, I can still wait a minute. As soon as he Probably. moves his yeah, I'm. <laughs> we talked about this last time. My eyesight. Okay, I'm trying an eight pound uh, prime rib bone in. Is it too big? Probably. Yeah, because of the way the shape is. I mean, you know, it's an eight pound prime rib is probably going to be at least five bones, I would think. You're probably not going to fit that in. So you'd either have to cut it in. It's it's probably even, you know, more than that. It's probably six bones or something like that. But um, you'd probably have to cut it into three, four bones probably max to fit. And then the rack on the low position to do the prime rib with the bone in. Now, I will tell a funny story, though, about prime rib, which was not really prime rib. It was actually choice rib because it wasn't the prime grating, but it was still delicious, right? Um, I bought it. I froze it. I didn't end up using it for anything. So, you know, every once in a while, I'll go through the freezer and say, okay, I've really got to use this up. I really got to use this up. And when I got to this prime rib, I could just see Jeff's eyes like, oh my gosh, that sounds so amazing. And so I pulled it out. I thawed it and everything. And I was going to make it as uh, what were we going to do with it? Were we going to smoke it, I think? Probably. I think we were going to smoke it and then air fry it or something like that. Anyway, turns out that the butcher, I didn't know this. I, I didn't buy it at the butcher shop. I bought it at Sam's Club, I'm sure. But the butcher at Sam's or, or Walmart or something, who knows, had cut off the bones. So, Terry, the reason why I'm saying that, and then put them back on. They were there, but they weren't attached. So you might want to unwrap it if you haven't unwrapped it and find out because you may really have a boneless <laughs> if you just pull those bones it right off. Out to our benefit too because it was really good. It did work out nice. I just ended up cutting it in steaks instead of uh, instead of doing the um, the smoke on it. I just went ahead and cut it into steaks and then took the bones and and put them in the freezer for a bone broth later on. Oh, oh is that Jenny? J-E-N-N-I-E, -N -N -E. West, you're my favorite cook on the planet. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Thank you. I don't even know what to say to that one. That's awesome. Um, hey, Jolene, how are you? Hey, Norma. Hi, Charlie. How are you? Um, hi, Teresa from Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right. Um, hey, Linda. 
Um, hey, Patricia. Hi, Kathleen, Rob, Christina, Lisa, Abby. From London. I've never been to London. Have you been to London? Uh -huh. You have? Yeah. I haven't been. But I was there working. I wasn't there as a tourist. So it was like into London and then out to the country, which is really cool. Yeah. Where in the country? It's, uh, it's like a really long name. I'd have to think of it. Like, What were you doing there? Well, I was shooting a conference in London, which took about a half a day. And then... I had to wait for my plane, so I went with the producer that I was with, the lawyer that I was with, to the country. We stayed there for a couple of days in there. Oh, okay. So you weren't working the whole time? No, I was actually hanging out in the country, and it is beautiful. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. In case you guys, oh, Barbara says we're echoing. I'm not sure why that would be. Because I had two friends <laughs> open. Oh, sorry about that. Um so in case you guys don't know, I'll brag on Jeff a little bit. He traveled the world doing documentaries and things. Although I think that must have been when you were doing stuff for uh, another company, FTI. Yeah. Um, and so he's been an editor, a video edi editor and a videographer for, gosh, years and years and years. And, and transitioned into being a pilot, a helicopter pilot in life. So that was his, you know, young, young Jeff job traveling traveling the world. And he has got some amazing stories, let me tell you. Hey, Colleen, welcome back. How are you? Um, okay, Lisa, your jambalaya recipe calls for roasted coriander, but I can only find coriander. Will that be okay? Yeah, it'll be fine. In fact, I'm having a hard time finding the roasted coriander. If you, I mean, if you felt like it, you could get coriander seeds and toast them up yourself. Or you could even put the regular in a pan and maybe toast it up a little bit. But it's fine. It's good. No worries. It'll be fine. And maybe it'll all be roasted. You know, I tried to look that up to see if there was a difference. I do think there is, though. Oh, as a matter of fact, there is. Because I had both kinds and I smelled both of them and there is a little difference. But it won't matter. Okay, Kathleen's saying the voice is bad. Yeah, it's going to probably be our internet again or the connection. Just like that last time we had um, Richie Audio. So we'll just have to ride it out for a little bit, see how it goes. I hate to have to start over because audio again. What is the problem? I don't know if it's StreamYard or if it's um, either YouTube. Well, last time YouTube and Facebook were bad. And it turned out it was a StreamYard problem because when we reconnected and did a new live, it was just live. Well, that'll be a reason to just get rid of StreamYard. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll have to do something else because this is the second time. It's very, very aggravating to me. Let me tell you. Um, yeah. You're just going to have to start over, I guess. I don't know what else to do. I mean, what else can you do? You can do. I mean, I want to No, because it sounds like garbage it sounds like garbage um is there anything we can do to troubleshoot it on our end before we do that i'm getting to the point where i i really i despise the internet i despise it because we are so reliant on it for so many things exactly like it was the last time we did a lot the last time we shot video it was two weeks ago tuesday I haven't changed anything. I'm you don't think the cable's going bad? You have the um, microphones, batteries are good. Batteries are brand new today. All right, Robin, nothing's cooking because we're having some we're having some technical difficulties. So I'm not gonna cook anything until I know whether or not it's gonna work. Juliet, I don't have a recipe for beef short ribs, but it's on my list. I just haven't gotten it. I haven't gotten the flavor down right. Um Annie, I'm sorry to hear that. We might not be staying long either. <laughs> we can't get this to work. Before we start cooking, we should probably go ahead and uh, restart it. If everybody just stays put. It'll show up with another notification, right? I don't know. I got to set it all up in fine. StreamYard. Let me, um, still a bit of voice issues. Let me go down to the oh, gosh. 
I'm so frustrated. Hey, well, Crystal, I've been calling. I've been calling out your name. Like, oh my gosh, I hope she's okay for the past couple of weeks. Um, okay, I'm I'm glad you're okay. Let's okay it for now. People are saying it's got to be an internet issue. In fact, we had a almost a no go today because of the internet. So let's go ahead and um. Yeah, you know what? Let me do a speed test while you talk a little bit. Please okay. So, well, speed. today we actually had our internet shut down at 2.30. It shut down completely. And turned out it was citywide. Um, but we have really good fiber internet. So that was just like a little glitch, and it came back up, and it was perfectly fine. So, like, right now our download speeds are 653 um, megabits per second our upload's insane, and our upload is insane at 725 megabits per second you can stream at six megabytes per second upload you can stream to facebook and stuff fine so that is not the problem our internet is not the problem it is something to do with either us going through Streamyard, um which usually works perfectly fine um, and Crystal, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna. Ha I'll have to read your comment after the fact because it's already passed. And um, let's see. Um, okay. Well, I guess you guys tell me the sound now. Christina's saying the sound is fine right now. It's way better right now. Um, so let's give it another second and see. If it, it's it's not that bad and we can easily understand you, okay. All right, well let's roll with it a little bit, okay? <laughs> because it's such a pain to start over. It's a pain. although it's a pain for everybody who's who's going to watch after the fact to watch this ten minutes of <laughs> troubleshooting too. But anyway, um, okay. John says it's almost normal. Okay. All right, well, we'll go with it. Okay. All right. All right, let's go with it. Okay, so welcome to Tasty Tuesday. And if you're new and haven't joined us before, it is a, a cooking show. It's a live cooking show where Jeff usually, we just switch it up now and then, but Jeff usually brings me ingredients from the grocery store or, you know, our freezer or pantry or whatever. And he presents them to me. I'm, I don't know what's in the bag or the box or anything. I have no idea. And then I have to make dinner on the fly. So it's kind of fun. He usually has an idea in his mind of what he wants me to make. Sometimes I can get it like just like that. And sometimes it's a little like, what? Um, and sometimes I make what he wants and sometimes I don't. So it's always fun though. All right. So let's right, get so to it. I'm pretty sure that after one or two ingredients, you're going to know what I want. You can do whatever you want. But then I've got other other things not other parts like other parts of the recipe where there's different ways that it can be approached and i'll you'll see that in a second. okay so you can go ahead and dig into the salt and pepper bag all right let's dig into the salt and pepper bag oh well go put on your pajamas and go um fix a drink because we're gonna be here a while Chuck Rose. I know exactly what he wants me to make. All right. So I'm going to have to make this really fast, though. Okay. And he wants me to make a Mississippi pot roast. Okay. All right. Well, let me explain the rest of it. Okay. But do you guys know how long it takes to pressure cook a pot roast that's whole like this? Not if you cut it up into units. That's right. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> let's get to it. All right. So you here's, spoiled the surprise. Here's your options. You can do no, who's telling who what to do? Tiger talk. Stop telling me what to do. <laughs> All right, so you can use Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning. Nope. Or a bunch of crap, including a little buttermilk. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay, that's interesting. And that should do it for the Mississippi pot roast. Okay. You may want to make a roux. I don't know if you want to do, go, to go with that for the gravy, but that's your option. 
But then, and you knew this was coming. Okay. French loaf. Okay. Lettuce. I thought you were low Tomato. carb. Not today. Not today. <laughs> Not, Not on Tasty today. Tuesday. Not on Tasty Tuesday. So this okay. is basically the plan is to make a boy. Okay. Spot. So this is going to make it easy, really easy. Okay. And it's something that I think you guys will enjoy, actually. So this is going to be pot roast is what? Is, is it usually the pepperoncinis? Is that yeah. what it is? Uh, you can use the cut up ones or the whole ones. Okay. Okay. So my um, my hair is sticking in my necklace. Anyway, um, so it is uh, usually uh, some kind of a beef, right? Uh, Chuck roast is, is pretty common. The pepperoncinis and ranch packet dressing. Okay. And I don't know what else. I've never really looked at a recipe online for it. I just made it, made what I thought it was supposed to be one day. And Jeff absolutely loved it. Now, it can take a long time. So let's say that you're just getting home from work, but that's kind of the flavors that you want. You, you know, because with the Mississippi Pot Roast, they usually put the ranch packet in there. Um, and that's kind of the flavors that you want. You can do it super, super quick, okay? And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So we will turn this on a little bit. Now, if you've made my pot roast recipe, you know that I do it in um, 30 minutes because I put it um, in like little chunks. We're gonna go even further than that because Jeff wants a po' boy sandwich. So the po' boy sandwich is gonna be almost like a shredded beef. So we can go really small. and get this cooked up in minutes instead of hours, which I just love. Now, how many minutes? I don't know, I've never done it this way. Because <laughs> last time when I just threw it in, I did it just like my pot roast, right? I did it for 30 minutes in four big chunks, right? But I'm gonna try to get this done in like a 10 minute pressure cook time. Now, I don't know if it's gonna work. We're gonna try it. So I've got the pot on. I'm going to put some oil in. Jeff, you want to grab the olive oil? I'm going to have to go and wash my hands. Um, I'm going to season this with just some salt and pepper and then sear the meat. The olive oil is right behind me on that stand. And then um, well, do me a favor and reach in there so I can salt and pepper. Get a, like a teaspoon, tablespoon. It doesn't matter. That's fine. Half tablespoon, I, you know, because I'm just going to guess. I'm not measuring because um, I don't usually, I don't usually cook with measurements, honestly. Um, I just don't. Now, I'm not trimming the fat off or anything. I'm not trimming anything. I'm just chunking it up into small, Hit, um, almost start. like beef stew. Sure. I can't. I'll do it. <laughs> can't. So my, he said, turn it on. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It happens. It happens. That was Colleen Wolf. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, do you think I can get this done in ten minutes, Jeff? I mean, not ten minutes from start to fit. Not ten there, minutes there, because. No, no but you could do it a lot faster than if you were to throw a whole chunk roast in there. But I, I think I can get this in 10 minutes. You don't think? Well, we'll see. Are you going to sear it first? Yeah. I'm going to try 10 minutes. Might need 15, though. But how long do I do my beef stew? Is that These are a little bit bigger than the beef mm -hmm. stew. No, you know why? Because I think I do it longer. Because I think I want to get, I think I do it longer. Maybe I don't, though. I don't know. Okay. You want Let's me to look up your beef stew recipe? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. All right. I don't have any equipment that I need, though. All right. I do have a clean hand. I could have started that. I didn't even realize that. I think it's clean anyway. I hope it's clean. Now, I don't remember how I did this, but it's similar to the dill carrots, right? 
this evening? Yes. Yeah, I've got the but amplified, I've got right? Your dill recipe if you want the quantity. Okay. I didn't look at that pot to heat up enough. I want to wash the cutting board. I'm gonna have Jeff wash the cutting board. All right, so I haven't been in the comments. I hope hopefully everything is okay. Um I still haven't read what's going on with Crystal, so I'll have to do that. But um, I, I hope the sound is okay. Is the sound okay? That's the We've big had, deal. Uh, some people say it's marginal, marginal. and most people say it's fine. Oh, I just caught my shirt in there. <laughs> All right, you want to clean this for me, please? Sure. And then I'm going to go wash my hands real quick and grab another thing that I need. Um, oh, I forgot to grab what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> I made dessert by the way. I tested a recipe today and I made dessert. And, it, and it's a low carb dessert. I have no idea if it's any good. All right, we're just going to leave those alone. Now, let's make up our ranch dressing mix or packet, but we're not going to use that. We're going to our own. And, you know, so I don't screw it up. Jeff, could you give me some measurements from my dill carrots? Because the the amounts will be different, but the um, sound is echoing, yeah. You pressure cooked your beef stew on 20 for 20 minutes. Okay. All right, so for the dill, Half a tablespoon of dill, half a tablespoon of onion powder, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of parsley, a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of pepper. Okay. You ready for some math skills? <laughs> You're looking at the wrong guy, but I'll try. All right. So for this amount of meat, I already salted. I'm going to do one teaspoon of salt in the rub. We're going to do one teaspoon of pepper. Um, okay, so now we're into the tablespoons, and the, I'm going to do two tablespoons. This is just a teaspoon, so I'm going to do two tablespoons, three teaspoons in every tablespoon. I'm going to need to get some more parsley. So two tablespoons of this. I might have just put in a little extra. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It won't matter. Okay, now garlic was half of a tablespoon, a tablespoon. so I'll be putting in... One, I'm doubling it. Now, I don't know if this is going to be any good, so don't write this down. <laughs> no idea. Now, is there a reason to go heavy on the dill? I didn't go heavy on the dill. I haven't even put the dill in yet. Oh, what was the first thing you put Parsley. in? Parsley. Oh, you went heavy on the parsley. Now, the dill. Oh, it was, I got you. It was one tablespoon. You doubled it. Yeah. Now, the dill, was it one tablespoon? It was a half tablespoon. Okay. Oh, I have fresh dough. All that fresh dough. John says, don't right. worry about the sound. We can hear you okay. I'm sorry about that, guys. Okay. I might have put too much parsley in. All right, let's take a peek. Let's look. Let's open it. All right, let's see. Taste test time. I didn't look anything like that because they've got the um, powdered buttermilk already in there. Oh, yeah, right. Nothing like it. But what's going to taste better? I could put buttermilk in there. Might I put buttermilk in there? Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, that's kind of what gives um, brain stress in its head. All right. I've never, I've never found powdered buttermilk. I don't even have a container. I don't think it's big enough to do this. Okay. 
So, so probably a, a, I put in a quarter cup of the, this is cultured buttermilk. Now let's dump my seasonings in. All right, now it's looking a little bit better. A little, I won't say better. It's looking a little bit more like it. But I have a feeling I have a lot more seasonings in mine than they have in theirs, right? Which is probably okay. going to be fine because you probably need like eight of those packets. Oh, that's good. Oh, my gosh, that's good with the buttermilk in there. Oh my gosh, that's good. Oh. Oh, wow. Woo! I saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> Whoa. That's like concentrated. You gotta try this. Really. Can I only try yours? Do I really have to try it? It's good. It's just so different. Maybe you need to help me make it better, make mine better. It's really tangy. It's almost. It's almost like we have. It's almost like we have an, a like a vinegar in there or something. Sorry. Okay, ready? I just dump it right on my finger. Isn't that like? Oh. Yeah, I'm trying to think what it reminds me of. I mean, it's. Probably the buttermilk. It's potent. Mine tastes better though. Mm. Yours is real nice. It is, but it's not as, I mean, I don't know. It's not as in your face tart. Mm. That's pretty good though. It's buckery. I don't know what's giving it that. Mm. It reminds me. Oh, of mine's so good though. That, um, Reminds me of something, but I don't know why. Okay, this is how I have to read now. Mal, malted, malt dextra. That's what I was tasting. You don't even know what that is, do you? Malted, no, I don't. Oh, MSG. There you go. That's probably part of it, too. I can't even hardly pronounce. Lactic acid, okay, so that's going to be an acid. Calcium lactate, spices, Citric acid. Oh, citric acid. That's what it was. Xanthan gum, bar gum. Um, buttermilk is the second. Buttermilk is the second ingredient. Salt is the third ingredient. So let me just tell you that my version is much, much better for you. Okay. All right. So the meat is pretty much seared i'm not too worried about it like being brown and gorgeous because we're going to shred it anyway now now you do what you want to do but i saw some recipes where they actually use about a quarter of a cup of the juice from the peppers but of course, <laughs> but, of course. but of course should i cut these i would cut them in half or, or a couple of them and let a couple of people i need them. a knife should I cut the, or should I just pull the stems off? I'll just pull the stems off. Because we don't want to bite into those in our sandwiches. Okay. All right. Um, I'm trying to read some comments, but I can't see them. I was going to read one for you. Chris, Christina McNeil said she made the salted pepper popper. What's that? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what? Last week? Last time. Last Tasty Tuesday. All right. I'm putting in maybe a half of the jar. You can put in as many as you want or as few as you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And then about a quarter cup of the juice. Um, we don't even really need beef broth with all of this because I've got enough. Now, I'll tell you why I put beef broth in there. Okay. Because a lot of the recipes, that, almost all the recipes I saw had like powdered au jus mix. And I figured you wanted some beef in this, but you might draw that from the... Beef itself? 
<laughs> yeah, let's let's go with that first. Um, I don't even know what a powdered au jus would be. And then I'm going to sprinkle these on top. No stirring. And switch over. And I did see somebody ask a question about why don't, why don't I use the two lid anymore? I do use the two lid, just not on camera a lot, just because this one sits here and it's, it's just available. All right, high pressure, 10 minutes. Let's see what happens. Okay. So why don't you talk about these sandwiches, Jeff? Okay. What am I? I don't know. Like, what are they? Where did, how did they come to be? Um, you made them. Well, yeah. Well, po, po boy sandwiches are a New Orleans thing. Right. And I meant this version. This version, I think, only because we went to a, um, a New Orleans type restaurant. Remember in Nashville, that little order at the counter, sit down, but it was so good. We had the jambalaya. And oh, yeah. Um, the I, voodoo place. Yeah. And I had gotten a roast beef. Oh, boy. So when you made the Mississippi um, pot roast, mm -hmm. it just made sense. Hey, let's turn it to the boy. Especially since it's so easy to get good French bread. I like the only thing you can get around here. <laughs> And this is actually New New Orleans French bread, according to the bag that it's in. So that's kind of oh, nice. okay, okay. Oh, it's light. Wow, that yeah. is really light. Yeah, very unlike the um, the typical French bread loaf that you find at Ellie's. Yeah. Wow. Perfect for sandwiches. Yes. Did you give me? That? Oh no, I didn't need it. All right, so what are we gonna do? About this much? I would say cut it in half and then cut it in half, so quarters. Maybe fifths. Yeah. You could you could cut that in fifths if you can figure it out. And that'd be enough for two people. That'll be plenty for us. It's already splitting in one place. Abby said, did you put in any liquid other than the vinegar from the peppers? No. I did. The, ju the juices were enough in the bottom. I have probably had about, not quite a cup, probably about three quarters of a cup, but it's going to give off more uh, juices as it comes to pressure. So, and I'm sorry for looking down. I need to be looking up. I'm so sorry about that. Um, it'll, as it cooks, it's going to give off more juices. So we're going to have plenty of liquid. And this is not really something that I want a whole bunch of liquid with anyway. Like Jeff was saying, I could thicken it if I wanted to, but I don't think I'm going to worry about thickening it. We don't need gravy on the you're sandwich. Not serving, yeah, you're serving it differently. Yeah, you're yeah. So, kind of pull the, pull, pull the heat out. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna, we're going to be making a sandwich. So I am going to be heating this, toasting this bun, um, which we're going to do all old school, I guess, because I don't have a knife. Do you want to, do you want a serrated knife? Yeah. Be good because <laughs> I don't want to mess it up <laughs> too bad. Okay, um, let's see. Yeah, Abby, it's not. I just used it. It's probably in the sink. That's a problem. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Um, where was I? Um, yeah, Abby, so depending on what you're cooking, like a lot of people say you have to have a cup of liquid to pressure cook. And that is not true. You have to have enough liquid to build steam to put the pot under pressure. Once it's under pressure, your pin's up, then you don't, you, you're not losing any liquid. So evaporation doesn't happen. So you don't have to like overcompensate with the liquid. I looked at what was in the bottom of the pot and between the quarter cup of juice that I put in and what had already released from the beef, I had plenty. I mean, at least three quarters, maybe even a cup of liquid. I don't want it to be real soupy, so I'm not going to add anything else to it. Um, now, other things, like if you're cooking something that absorbs liquid, like rice or pasta and things like that, then you need to increase the liquid, obviously, depending on how much of those liquid absorbing ingredients that you have. 
but with proteins like beef and chicken, they give off liquids. So I even tend to undershoot the liquid a little bit so that, so that I don't have a lot of like just thin juices at the end. Um, I'm going to have to rewatch this to get that ranch recipe. Well, you know, I should have saved some and mixed it with a little bit of milk to see would it actually come together as a ranch as a ranch dressing? Would it be thick enough? I don't even know. I've never in my life had powdered buttermilk. There's no thickener in that, so it's probably not going so, to be thick enough. You need something. So probably, I, would, I like xanthan gum just because it's easy to get. All right, so we are now under pressure with 10 minutes. I don't know if this is going to be enough time. I'll be honest. I don't know. All right, let's get the roll split. We'll get it into the oven to toast. Do you want me to the oven? I don't know. What did you do your sandwiches on before? Um, I actually did them in the other oven. There's a, a, a rack or a tray up there. You don't want that. Oh, you, yeah, you can pull that out. Let me show them what I did. I have some funny things I do during the day. So I get brainstorms every now and again and have a lot of flops. So I know that you guys, um, you know, you see the recipes after they're all done and perfected and all that stuff. But sometimes it's fun to see the mess ups. This I wouldn't say a mess up. It just did not work. So I make a lot of yogurt and I was going to start making like some low carb type of protein drinks and I'm real funny about this. I don't like anything that I can buy at the store. I don't like the whey powder. I don't like the artificial sweeteners. I, there's so many things I don't like, but I do like my homemade yogurt. And I thought if I could mix that with something, I haven't decided what yet, um, and put in my own whey powder that is just the whey dehydrated from the leftover yogurt, then that's going to be a win for me. So... I saw something online where you take the whey that comes out of the yogurt as you strain it, you know, if you're making Greek yogurt like I do, and you boil it down until it starts to darken and thicken, and then you pour it into a tray and you dehydrate it, and then you put it into powder. Well, I mean, I could dehydrate this longer, but it it's like the stickiest, oh, it smells good though. It's like the stickiest mess right now. That, I don't even know what to say about this right this second. It is so weird. Your face says it all. Jeff, come here. No. Yes. Okay, so it starts off like it's going to be candy. I feel like the second guy to eat clams. And then it becomes real salty and real, like, doesn't it become, like, acidic? Mm hmm Isn't that interesting? It's, it's, I would say interesting. It's not gross. It's not gross. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just, I've it's never tasted very anything like that. interesting. It's almost what was missing in my ranch dressing. <laughs> so funny. But it's, it's got the texture. It's got the texture of, like, a um, yeah. chicken carrot. It does. It's so weird. Anyway, total fail here, okay? Total fail. And this was like from, I don't know, maybe six cups of whey, okay? You end up with one little sheet. Uh -uh. But I made some mistakes. I think I cooked it too too long, too high of a temperature in the dehydrator. You know, I just made a lot of mistakes because I never, never even have seen this done before, you know? We call them whey roll-ups. <sighs> It's so weird that I can't even explain the flavors and the textures in it. It's just so it, bizarre. And it, it evolves so quickly. It like, does. By the time you think you know what you're tasting, mm -hmm. it's changed to salty. Or yes. So it goes from sweet on the front end. Yeah, it goes from a sweet to a sour taffy to I would say salty then sour. It's I, weird. My tongue is so confused. I don't even. 
That's probably the strange. That's, that's probably the strangest thing ever, right? Like, like who makes that? Well, me. The salt and pepper makes makes that stuff. That's what that's what I do during the day. I, I play around with food. Now, I'm not giving up though, because the concept is solid, my friends. I just need to tweak it. So, and it can't be this dark because can you imagine like putting that into your drink? You'll look like you're drinking mud all the time. Okay. <laughs> Julia says, no, thanks. <laughs> right. That sounds yucky. It's not though. It's kind of weird. But um, when I get it right, if I get it right, you guys will see it, right? Okay. So we've got a few minutes here. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is going to surprise you guys probably is I'm going to do an immediate release. And I know people will be like, no, no, not with me. Don't do an immediate release. But it's going to be submerged in liquid. It's not going to dry out because what, what pulls the moisture from the meat is the release of pressure and the change in temperature, the drastic change in temperature. So as long as the meat's submerged in liquid and you do a quick release, you're not changing the temperature in there. You're not changing anything about the temperature with the liquid. It's all going to be on the surface. So we don't have to worry about that. All right, let's see. Um, Give me a scroll up a little bit. Um, I was looking at, I don't know how to pronounce the first name. Shawnee? Sean. Oh, just oh, Sean? No, I mean, it's, I would say. Sean? Maybe? Yeah, okay. Sean. I like the spelling. Um, my husband just said that the beef, he had been trying to get me to cook. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. I'm, I'm missing something. Maybe I missed something up there. Um, okay. Okay, so Crystal's aunt apparently was sick. I still haven't read that, that comment. Um, Crystal, I know this sounds really, really crazy, but I was really worried about you. So maybe, I know you're so busy, but maybe um, if you think about it, if you're not going to be around for a while, just pop me an email, Louise at the salt of pepper.com because we get a lot of people worried about it. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, cheddar pepper prepper says, usually weird is not a description of something I normally eat. Right, right. Well, I would definitely not recommend it because this is not even something that would, even if I get it right, it's not meant to be like. That's why I didn't want to taste it because your first word was that's weird. It is so okay. weird. Okay, you can count me out. Yeah, so weird. So weird. Um, and Mary says she's on the internet where they take the Greek yogurt and mix berries and dehydrate. It looks like almond bark. I thought about doing now, that. You know what? That is sweet. Even if it's honey or artificial sweet. And then put in some like figs or almond. Or, I mean, there's a lot you could do with something like that. But as is, I would. That is very true. I mean, so you could take the way, and if I dehydrated at a lower temperature for a longer period of time, so it wasn't so sticky on the bottom, I could make sort of like a protein roll up because whey is pure protein. So it's really good. I mean, you know, obviously, unless you're on a low protein diet. Um, hmm. It's almost something that you could market in. Make I've never seen anything that was pure whey protein. That well, they have it in powder form. Right. At $22 a thing. Now I'm starting to think that's cheap because this well, was six cups of whey that comes down on one little sheet. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to think, just buy it. <laughs> oh my gosh. John, um, did we have a nice Easter? What did we do for Easter? We worked. Um, Did you work? We, work. We worked on the farm. We worked on the farm. Jeff is. Oh gosh, Jeff. So when they put my greenhouse in, they, I, I, they okay. We didn't have a slab for it, right? Because we don't need to do that back in, you know, in the middle of nowhere. So we didn't have a slab for it. I wasn't really thinking that you know to level it. They're going to be up. It's going to be up on cinder blocks, and maybe the back might look like it's higher. It's completely level, okay? It's completely level. But it doesn't look like it. Every time I looked at it, I thought it was like 
like I was in the door, the Wizard of Oz, and it was one of the houses that was going to get, you know, lifted up because like it was it already, it was already like levitating. That's what it looked like. It looked like it was levitating all over the ground, especially in the back. And it was terrible looking. Every time I looked at it, I'm like, oh. so Jeff uh, put Lattice around the bottom. He also worked getting it chicken proofed and everything. So he put, uh, was it hard, hardwood cloth or something? Yeah, I did a hardware cloth with a skirt that goes yeah. basically yeah. about a foot down and a foot yeah. out. So it's more like yeah. a foot and a half yeah. out and a half foot up. Yeah. And it looks amazing now. So now I have a little lattice trim and it, it looks Amazing. I'm so excited. And then we made um curry, right? Yeah, we just made a uh, awesome and, curry. Well, sort of mock awesome. sort of. Bye Annie. See you good. next time. I wish I could put up a picture. I don't remember how to did you just hit the little plus button? Maybe. Let me send the picture over from my phone. Okay. It smells good in there. Oh, we didn't. Did you preheat the oven? No, oh. I totally missed that. Uh oh. I'm gonna... Okay. Sounds good. Now, did we put any? Oh no, use the real oven. Well, no, you can use the little oven. That's fine. I don't know what. Yeah, fine. The real oven. They're both real ovens. That sounded terrible. Use the real oven. No, they're both real ovens. One little one's big. <clears throat> All right, we're pretty. Wow, smell this pepper. I know. You want to? You can just put it in there. Let's just get it going. Now what else, now what goes on the sandwich, Jeff? Does mayonnaise go on the sandwich? Why did I not have the onion in there? What? Was I supposed to have the onion in there? No, I think the onion was raw onions on the sandwich, but let me see, does a po' boy have raw onions? I don't know, I think it depends on what kind of po' boy you're making. 10 minutes, I PC'd, 10 you minutes. Could, you could put raw onions on a po' boy, but I don't know if it's like legit. So uh, Cheddar Pepper Prepper says, one of my favorite things to eat, take a pancake, fold it like a taco, put a patty of venison sausage in the middle, then stack bacon on both sides of the sausage. I would like a drizzle of um, ketchup, I know, and a little bit of syrup on mine. Thank you. All right. Hey, Aaron, how are you? So I'm making a Mississippi pot roast Oh boy, is what we're making here. And we pressure cook for 10 minutes. I'm trying to get this done. It was a big chuck roast. And I wanted to see if I could get it done in a 10 minute pressure cook time. So we're going to find out. I don't know if I did. I don't know if I can. Oh, please. It's going to look terrible. You want to see the pot? Jeff, you want to? Oh, I'm really steamed up. Let me, let me clear that. Hold on. Let me clear the steam. It looks terrible. But we're going to find out. We're going to mix it up now. Oh, yuck. <laughs> All right. Here we go, folks. Ready for terrible? Okay. All right. Let me get the shot. Get the okay. Shot. It's ugly. It is ugly. Okay. It looks terrible, right? All you have to do. And let's see. I don't know. We might have to go back on our pressure. It looks a little rare. It's not rare. It's totally done. Oh. I don't know because it's really hard to tell when it's in there with the tongs. So let's get let's get um forks. Okay. Moment of truth. No, not quite. No, no. You know what, Jeff? Why does it look so rare? Wow, that's interesting. That I am surprised by. Okay, I'm not usually surprised too often when it comes to pressure cooking, but I am right now. Is it really rare? Well, it's not like it's rare. I mean, it's just really tough. And I'm, oh, I'm tough. shocked. Well, then, Let's take a temperature. No, it's not going to 
good at all. So we're so we're we're about so when you want something to shred, you want it over two hundred degrees. But we are at like one ninety nine. I'm a little shocked right now. Okay, now I think we have enough thin liquid still to go back under pressure. So I'm going to go back under pressure, and we have to start stop, and I'm going to have to go back under for. I'm just going to do five minutes. I am very shocked, honestly. That that time was not enough. Terry said a little natural release. She didn't. You did natural release enough. I that would have. That would have helped. Not enough. No. No. Because what what you think about like you're ramping down the temperature at that point, and in order to break down the connective tissue, you want to keep the temperature up at a, above like 160, 170. So it's easier. It's better to go under pressure for a longer period of time and not do a natural release for this because it's submerged in the liquid. Now a big roast, it might be, might be different. Okay. So this is just for what I'm doing today, longer pressure cook time and an immediate release is going to be better for this meat. <clears throat> I'm bummed though. I am bummed. Oh. I need to get a little bit of water. I feel like drinking water out of the wine glass. This is, I feel that. It's fine. Whatever you want, because you're the you're the king of. Cheers, everybody. I am drinking water though because I'm driving home. I think it's not it's not brown, but it's crunchy. Okay, that'll be fine. Okay. Uh, did we put mayonnaise or anything on it? I don't know if a po po boy gets mayonnaise. Well, it depends on what kind of po boy, but yeah, I think they do. Oh. I can't. Share a picture. Hey, Native Doll, how are you? Where are the puppies? They're at home. That's why I'm driving home tonight. Jeff has a meeting in Corinth tomorrow. So where he's going to stay here, and I'm going to go home and take care of the dogs. We usually bring them, but we've had so much rain. The, the backyard's muddy. It's just, it's just terrible. We have terrible drainage. So um, we've been trying to, we've been trying to like pump water, like it collects in our, in our crawl space. We need to have somebody like put in a professional sump pump thing, but getting people to do work is not very easily, not very easy. Horseradish. Well, that sounds good. Okay. So, um, boy, po boy sauce usually starts with mayonnaise, hot sauce, lemon juice, and some Creole mustard, which we don't have any Creole mustard. We might have some, we might have some Cajun mustard here, don't we? I don't know. Nah, probably not. Probably not. I don't want mustard on mine, though. I don't know. That no. doesn't sound good. I think a little mayo. I think a little mayo will be good. I am making a mess out of this. And who was it that said, once you cut... Somebody said, if you cut lettuce with a knife, it's brown faster. And that is absolutely not true. I, I was up. told that my whole life. Yeah. I looked it up, but There's it's not, not true. Okay. Um, all right. Will you rinse, rinse the lettuce and rinse the tomato? And I'll cut the tomato slices. And then put that on some paper towels so we can drain that. Dry that lettuce off and we'll be ready. We'll be ready when the meat's ready. Oh, start. so it did go under pressure again, right? Yay. Gosh, I hope five minutes is enough. We're going to slice these. Thin. Barbara Nevin says, yes, it is true. No, it's not true. <laughs> it is not true. I looked it up. It is a myth. 
So tearing it by hand, cutting with a plastic knife, or cutting it with a metal knife. Makes no difference. Yes. Yes, I looked it up because I was I was curious. Sorry, Barbara. And then what? How so did I did I do it? I think I did it. Where I tore one and cut one and it made a difference. I think I did that. I don't remember though. Because I was very curious after the last time we talked about it. It, Teresa, it came up on Tasty Tuesday. Teresa said, y'all need a French drain with a sump pump. We don't even need the French drain because it's already trenched inside of the crawl space. But we've had plumbers come out and try to get them to, to do the <laughs> sump pump. And they never call us back. It's like, I think they're so scared of something. I don't know what it is. We keep trying. I don't know. We did have... Somebody, the people that do our plumbing in Tennessee wanted to charge us like 3500 bucks or something. Barbara, lettuce browns where it's cut because of air. So it doesn't matter how it's cut, right? Like that that's kind of what they're saying. If you cut it with plastic, it won't brown, but it will. It will. That's what's, that's the wrong thing that I was talking about. MD said, don't forget the cheese, but I don't know if there's cheese on it. Yeah. I mean, cheese is delicious, but I, well, you keep saying a po' boy. A po' boy is just a sandwich because they have all kinds of different kinds. So, like, you might not put it on a shrimp po' boy, but you might put it on a different kind of po' boy. You might, if you want it. Yeah, you put whatever you want on your it's sandwich. Your sandwich. Yeah, I don't think we have any cheese here though, so that'll be a now. <laughs> we won't be doing that. Um, you have a ghost in the crawl space, reason for no callbacks, right? Right. Yeah, probably. Well, I'll tell you, I smelled something like it. I said, Jeff, I think an animal died down there or something. But it went away. <laughs> so I guess it's decomposed enough now. It's just bones. I don't know what it was. Um, I wonder... Yeah, over 200, uh, Thomas, for shredding usually. So, yeah. So, yeah, 210 is a good mark. But I'm really shocked, though, that it was like, like that tough at 199. Like, that was a little shocking to me. Um, but anyway, hey, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Now I know that 10 minutes is not long enough. So if I ever do a recipe on this, it will not be a 10-minute pressure cook. It will probably be a 20-minute pressure cook. Um, places well, aren't you basically making a beef sandwich? Well, yeah, yeah, basically a pulled beef sandwich, but the beef is seasoned like you would a Mississippi pot roast. So it's kind of combining the Mississippi pot roast flavors with a pulled beef sandwich, basically. That Jeff likes to call a po' boy. So we're gonna call it Mississippi, Mississippi what? A Mississippi po' boy? I don't know. I don't know what he's calling. Hi, Shaw. How are you? Thomas, I was rooting for me too, but it was just didn't happen. That's all right. There was always a chance. I knew it going into it. Um, so, uh, Christina, store tomatoes in fridge or counter? Counter until it's cut. And then once it's cut, you put it in the fridge. It's my thing. You can store them in the fridge, though, if you want. But I just store them. You can go by what the grocery store does. If they're not in refrigerated section of the They're grocery never store, in a refrigerated section. Of, so, yeah. So yeah. When I buy a vegetable, like lettuce, it's always in the cooler section. Yeah. So, yeah. The fridge. Oh, yeah, Lisa. So, that's like an Italian style beef sandwich. Yep. Yep. Um, How long are you going to naturally live? I'm not. Oh, I don't know, guys. It might not be done. What is it? 15 minutes? 15 minutes. Two times the pressure. Like, so, I would say 
probably equivalent to maybe 17 minutes of pressure at this time. What's that? Yeah. You know, sometimes it's just the cut of meat. Honestly, sometimes you just get a bad one. That has happened to me um, with beef and chicken. Oh, Randy. Yeah, let me pop that one. Oh, a burger barbecue sauce. if I didn't have all these ranch flavors in there. But think about that. The ranch flavors with a bourbon barbecue. I don't think that would taste good, personally. Um, but I like that idea. That sounds really good, doesn't it? If, if, you, if, there was, if you flavor with the salt and pepper, maybe a little. Yeah, and maybe even pressure cooked with a little bit of like um, a maple syrup with maybe a splash of bourbon. Oh, yeah. And then pressure cook with that, right? Mmm. Oh, my. That would be good. Why is this thing so I don't think you turned it off. Well, that would explain it. Um. Okay, so John's talking about something when it when it comes down to lettuce, and then somebody's asking about you store it in the water in the fridge. I want to hear about this, John. Let me go back up to that comment. So, okay, okay that's, um, that that's a just a yeah. Um, Submerge your lettuce in cold water and keep it in the fridge. It will last for weeks. Done. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. That, that makes perfect that sense. That makes perfect sense, John. Oh, my gosh. That is like the tip of the year. Because you know how many times I throw away lettuce because it's gone, it's, you know, browning. And, I mean, sometimes I'll peel off the leaves. I'm not that funny. I'll peel them off. And get down to where it's not brown, where the air isn't hitting it, and it's still fine. As long as it's not slimy and stinky, it's fine. But um, I love that because we just cut off the brown part. I'm just waiting to wipe the lens down. Oh, now it's going to steam it up. Oh, there's no fighting that amount of steam. All right, this looks amazing. I just don't know if it's done. All right, moment of truth. Okay, better, much better. I think we can make that work. What do you think? Let's see. I, have to find it to I think we can make that work. I don't know. Maybe not. It's a little tough. It's a little tough. It's not very good. <laughs> Flavor's good. Mm hmm. Texture's a little tough. Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. So you probably want to go for a 20 minute pressure cook. Probably 25 to 30. With a longer natural release. I don't think the natural release matters. It's good time. Well, yeah, but I don't think it matters. I think it's. Oh, well. The Guys, you don't have to stick around. The peppers are delicious. But, but I'm not going to. We're, we're going to make this right. This is going to work. You're going to do this right. Um, how about how about we have an upside down dinner? Oh, you got you got dessert. dessert. Sure, let's do that. So let me that pressure cooks. Yeah. So let let's do that. Let's do that. Um. So I did this thing today. Oh, as far as the lettuce goes, Barbara Wolf said, be sure to cut off the tips of the bottoms before you put it in the water. Tips of the bottoms. Like the stem? I would just probably put it all just like right down in the water, just like that, is what I would think. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. So I did a thing today. I used the Ninja Speedy. I blended up this concoction in the blender and I made low carb chocolate pudding. 
Okay, so I don't know what it's going to taste like. I sous vide it. I did it two different ways. So I actually put some in a bag because I, you know, I know some people won't have these jars, and it set up fine. In fact, it might even be a little firmer than what you would really want for chocolate pudding. So Jeff, let's dig in and see what see what we got, what? and we'll critique it as we go. Okay. So it's made with Swerve and dark cocoa powder. Um, Texture is perfect. Doesn't taste like fake sugar. No, but it's not sweet enough, is it? It could be a little sweeter. I think it could be a little sweeter. And I think the texture is too firm for pudding. You think so? Yeah. Mm, I like the texture. It's too firm for pudding. Pudding softer. Oh. Mmm. I like it. So it's made mostly with milk. So it's not even like a high heavy cream load in here. Um, it's good. I wonder if I have enough thin liquid to go under pressure because it's getting thicker as it as it goes each time. It's very good. In fact, I wouldn't even ask for more sugar. You don't think? Uh -uh. I think it's perfect. Mm. I like I like chocolate. Yeah, I'm going to have to work on the recipe. Less eggs. That'll tone the... I'm back and forth between two and three eggs. Um, I've used three. I'll use two. And a little bit more sugar. But all in all, the chocolate flavor is really good. Mmm. Yeah. Oh, my. If you're doing low carb, you could... Well, if you're doing keto... And you want that fat, uh, you can actually do more heavy cream. But for a no sugar, you know, a sugar substitute type of thing, that's pretty good. Um, what is Swerve made of? Let me grab it, I'll tell you. I, I thought it was erythritol or something, it's a sugar alcohol. Swerve. Get my eyes acclimated here. Erythritol. Do you have readers? Yeah. Hey, at least we have the same readers prescription. Yeah. Because I cannot see it. I'm not terrible. Okay. Um, erythritol, prebiotic oligosaccharides. It doesn't sound good. And natural flavors. I don't know if that's good for you. Yeah. Well, I like it the best Better of all sure. the. I'm working on my own blend though, because well, monk fruit is one that people use, but man, that taste is weird to me. So I don't like that. Um, Let's see. I need longer arms. That's right. Yep. If I could, this just happened to me like not that long ago. So I'm just still adjusting. And if you saw our last taste of Tuesday, I'm not adjusting very well. Um, so yeah, we just have to wait now. That was a delicious dessert though. I must say. So what is Marmite? Marmite. Isn't that a type of, cookware? I mean, like a type of dishware? I don't know. Um, Abby H said uh, I guess not, because Marmite on, you wouldn't put that on toast. <laughs> um, UK version of Marmite. Maybe, maybe marmalade? I don't know. What is Marmite? Help a us yeast, out. A yeast extract. 
It is? Marmite? Well, how did you come up with yeast extract? Because that's what Abby, who... Oh, oh, I see it now. Oh, oh. Well, she would know, I guess. I'm more Marmite. interested in what's Vegemite. Vegemite? What's that? It's an Australian thing. John? John? Vegemite. What's Vegemite made out of? Interesting. It's a brown tangy spread, a yeast extract. Um, oh, wow. I mean, I've never heard of that. The Brits eat it on everything. I've never you heard either, of it. You either love it or hate it. Interesting. Is it like our nutritional yeast? Would that be a fair? This, oh, it's a sticky yeast. Marmite. So Vegemite. Vegemite is a yeast extract. Really? Well, I thought, I don't know why I thought it was some sort of weird meat. I guess the veggies. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Very interesting. I love this. I love learning. It's so awesome. Here, Trisha says, Vegemite, Vegemite is a brown, sticky like molasses. Interesting. And I've only heard it as in that song, something about a Vegemite sandwich. I don't, I've never heard of Vegemite, Marmite, not, none of it. Um, yeah, nutritional yeast is a powder, but a, Marmite is a thick, gloopy spread. How interesting. Wow, I'm going to have to see if I can order some. I probably won't like it. It probably tastes just like this. <laughs> so the song they're referring to with the Vegemite sandwich is they come from the land down under. Oh, yeah. Something about a Vegemite sandwich. Gotcha. Which it, it always sounded like it was something gross, but now I'm thinking maybe not so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody was saying, just putting whey protein powder in foods to be cooked protein you know that's a really good question mary um i would not think so but i don't know for sure i don't know the answer for sure obviously then this is no longer protein packed but it does because i certainly did cook that um hmm, i don't know i'm not really sure so john so is my little sticky whatever we're going to call this. We're going to call this um, Waymite. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it. My sticky Waymite is very salty. It's very interesting, I must say. That. Very interesting. I think we should call it Wheezy Mite. Wheezy Mite. That is some, that is some funny stuff there. That's a Wheezy Mite. Um, and you spread it very thinly on toast. It doesn't sound very appetizing to me. I'm sorry. It, I don't know why. That does not sound very appetizing. Really salty, no, on, salty toast. on toast. No. I I don't I don't think that sounds good. Way my Abby likes way my way my. Um. Sue, so yeah, Sue, so it's salty, yeah. Um, on Facebook, where people oh try things nobody liked. Well, John, now do you, do you eat Vegemite or do you put Vegemite in things? Because like, okay, so fish sauce is one of the things that I have all the time. And I add it all the time when I'm doing, uh, making a uh, Thai or Korean, well, Thai mostly, cooking, right? I add fish sauce, almost everything, curry, everything. And if you smelled it, you would be like, oh my gosh, no, don't use it. It stinks. And I would never taste it. I mean, I can just imagine how foul it is. But you add it to things, and it has a whole different depth of flavor. Like, um, I'm working on a, a soup right now, which is a coconut soup. Without it, the soup is flat. With it, the soup is delicious. And I hate anything fish, and I agree. <laughs> yeah. It makes Definitely. A it makes a huge it difference. It stinks. Yeah. It does yep. change Uh, 
and you get loads of Vegemite products, Vegemite crackers, bread rolls. Interesting. Um, that's so awesome. We're going to have to try it just to see if it's something that's. Yes, you will. What do you mean? On some mean? nice toast. I'll, I'll to stick toast. to the way, mate. <laughs> you know, I like my toast. Cinnamon sugar. Oh, I know. <sighs> oh, guess what I did the other night? I did not use the air fryer. I actually put oil in a pot on the stove, which is this girl does not like to fry it in oil. It wasn't a pot. Yeah, it was a it was a shell. But this girl doesn't like to deep fry. Okay, I'm afraid of it because my one of my ex boyfriends caught the whole house on fire deep frying. <clears throat> so I'm nervous. Is that why he's the ex? No, no, he's an he's the ex for a lot of other reasons. Um, but anyway, so I'm, I've always just been really nervous about, about oil. So, um, although I, I'm okay if it's in a commercial, like when I'm at my restaurant, I would deep fry in the deep fryer all the time. It's no big deal. If I go and keep warm, I'm, no, I'm sorry. Um, so the other night, Jeff and I, we ate like kind of a late lunch, like two o'clock and we're like, we're not going to be hungry for dinner. So I'm not going to be dinner. We'll be fine. We should know. Well, about eight o'clock, we were like, hmm, hmm, what do we have to eat? Because we're a little bit hungry. And we didn't really have anything, you know, because most of the food's here where I cook for work, you know, at our house. I don't have a whole lot of stuff. I bring stuff from here or there. We didn't have anything. So I was like, okay, well, Jeff says, you know what sounds good? Um, like tortilla chips. And I had corn tortillas, so I know I could air fry them. Um, or I could deep fry them. And I said, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's deep fry them. So we cut up the tortilla, uh, the corn tortillas, and I deep fried them. And I said, but you know what? Let's get a little bit of sweet with our salty corn chips. So I had some wonton wrappers, well, the actually egg roll wrappers, and I cut those into strips, like about this big. And I put them into the oil, just, oh my gosh, 30 seconds or so, and then tossed them in cinnamon sugar. Oh my God. They were so good. They were so good. I could probably air fry them. Though. What do you think? Do you think I could air fry them? You got spritz. Yeah, you could air fry them. Will this be the winner? Well, you can do egg rolls. So I think I could probably do the spritz. It's interesting that the uh, Marmite and Vegemite discussion evolved to Nutella. Oh, okay, that's funny. And um, the interesting thing about Nutella is I hate um, hazelnut, but I love Nutella. Oh, yeah. You're strange. She's off camera and way over on the other side of the room, but she said I'm strange. <laughs> it's not in my head. I don't like, I don't like, um. But I gave you roasted hazelnuts and you were fine with it. I don't like hazelnut and coffee. Yeah, he doesn't like hazelnut coffee, which is why we have to buy two different kinds of coffee. That's, that's the real thing, because he's had hazelnuts and he likes them. And he loves Nutella, which is nothing but hazelnut. But when it comes to coffee, oh, that's the worst. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Hazelnut coffee. You this don't smells even have amazing. To drink that anymore. You drink caramel. Vanilla. Well, that's because that's what they have at Sam's. Oh. And I don't, I mean, I'm going to buy it in bulk. I'm not going to spend the money on the expensive stuff. <laughs> I like my coffee to taste like coffee. Um, Pauline, I'm with you. Hazelnut chocolate spread. Yuck, yuck. I don't like it. I love hazelnut. I don't like it. And I've never liked hazelnut. Um, uh, I mean, that, that stuff, whatever that stuff's called. Nutella? I love it. Yeah. What did I have? I made a Nutella. I have a recipe Nutella on my waffles or something. Yeah, Nutella recipe. French toast or something. Oh, that was so good. I, I, I'm sure they were okay. Was, I don't remember. Was like, that was a long time ago. Like I put it on my I put it on my website, so it couldn't have been terrible. But I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. All right. Well, Jeffrey Long, is this going to be? No, I might have to. Break this lens down again. 
Yep. All right, let me wipe the lens down again because that is way too much steam. Mm. I, I think the meat's done now. So it smells so good. It does smell good. All right, ready? Oh, it's really bubbling in there. Yep, now it's just falling apart. Okay, that's what you want. That's what we wanted. That's what you want. So I would think, just to make it easy, I would probably do this for 25 minutes, chop it up 25 minutes. And it is really thickened, too. Like, it's made its own. Like, I couldn't go under pressure again if I wanted to. There's no way. Now, obviously, under normal circumstances, I would put this in a bowl and I would like shred it with my forks, but we're not under normal circumstances. All right, Jeff, are you ready? Here, I I'm going to make ready an hour. Ago. I'm going to make your sandwich. You're going to taste it. And you're going to let everybody know how good it is. I would have liked the bun to be a little bit different. So I don't. We started a little early with the bun. We yeah, because I ready. screwed up. Yeah, because I screwed up the. Uh, yeah. I okay, what up. kind of meat? Aaron, Aaron Yant said, what kind of meat? It was a chuck roast. It was like a three pound chuck roast. Oops. I didn't even look to see how many pounds. And I just cubed it up. It was three. I, I It was okay. the smallest chuck roast they had. Okay. And now the peppers, of course, have all broken up pretty much. And it's got a nice juice to it. I mean, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful this is going to be delicious. I'm, I know I didn't make it look like it was very easy, but it really is an easy recipe. You just have to get the timing right. And that's what we just did together. We got the timing right now. So, oh my gosh. Jeff, what do you think? John said it needs a touch of Vegemite in the sauce. Vegemite. That looks delicious. Yes, it does. Now, I'm not even going to try to bite into that sandwich. Uh, Denise Carr said, have you ever tried Duke's Mayo? Yes, I don't like it. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. All right, I'm going to come over here for the tasting part. Now. This looks like a sandwich to be. Oh, my gosh. Look at that sandwich. It's a little it? salty, I'm going to say. It's a little salty. So, um, I would probably cut the salt in that. Um, okay, are you ready? Yeah. I'm not going to try it because you know what's going to happen. It's going to spill everywhere. All right, here we go. Oh, it's hot. Oh, sorry. Yeah, maybe <laughs> let it cool off. <laughs> oh, it's oh, I still got it on me. Yes, it's salty. Yeah. I'm going to need a nap. I need a nap. It is delicious, though. Um, oh, it's perfect. Christina, or who is asking about, um, oh, Aaron, is Hellman's, your Hellman's through and through, is Duke's very different from Hellman's? I think it is. I think it's very different. I think it's it's a cross between Hellman's and Miracle Whip to me. Who's just saying, did we forgot the onions? I think you chose not to put onions on there. I'm sorry It'll about the salt. Fine. I'm sorry it's about the salt. It's a little bit salty. It is a little bit salty. And I've got to try to think about how to fix that. I mean, obviously, I can use less salt on the beef in the beginning or, or skip it altogether. But I don't like to do that. I like to season the beef. Um, the ranch dressing wasn't salty. There wasn't much salt in the ranch dressing. One teaspoon. I mean, surprisingly, there's not a whole lot of salt in this I would whole cut it thing. back in the ranch dressing before I cut it back on. Because you want to season itself. the meat. Yeah. 
I know Jeff likes it because he's still eating on camera. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's really, really good. And this, this French I already bread. got it on me, and I and it's it's a little greasy, so this French forgive bread me. I'm is not gonna amazing. I like need to eat with a bib. <laughs> I ruin all my clothes. Um, I'm so sad though that it's too salty. I'm sad about that because I think the flavors were so good. Just a little bit too salty. No. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to skip seasoning it. Um, I put a teaspoon in the. Maybe I just put too much salt on the meat. By the way. So, Tristan I'm just going to be really careful. Tristan Friedman, what, what kind of bread we used? I don't know if you can get this everywhere. Cartozos. Cartozos. Can they see that? It's uh, of New Orleans. Where did you bread. find it? I found it at, um, of all places, Food Giant. Food Giant. I like going Food there Giant sometimes. Food Giant in Selmer, Tennessee. Yeah, I like going there sometimes. All right, I think this is going to be really good. Um, the pepper brine pushed the salt over the top. Thomas, great yeah. thought there. That is that is the perfect thought. So this is this is the things that like when you're writing a recipe, and now I want to get this recipe up on the website because it's amazing. It's so delicious. But these are the things I have to think about. Some people are going to use the ranch powder packet instead of my version of the homemade, which I totally understand. So I'm going to have to make it with that. And that's way saltier than what I made. Um, but if you skip seasoning the meat with salt, you can end up having like a flavorful broth, but having an unflavorful piece of beef, you know, when you bite into it. So it's like all these steps are important and getting them, like getting them to work. Why and you do? want that. You want the vinegar stuff in there. I'm sure it's a pickly. Vinegar, vinegar, salt. So yeah. Vinegar, more it's vinegar, a, yeah. salt. Yeah, but it's vinegar, salt. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's a pickling liquid kind of. So, wow. Well, it's amazing. Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's delicious. And even though it's a little salty, I'll still finish this. Yeah. Well, I, I can desalt it a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, I, I don't know. Maybe I can... I can thin it out a little bit and then we won't just have, I like the gravy though, that, that made itself. That is amazing. Isn't it? How that gravy made itself yeah. without any thickeners. I mean, look at that. Can you, can everybody, can everybody see in there? Oh yeah. I mean, that's amazing. And we didn't even, we didn't need thickener. We didn't need au jus added. Well, the au jus, au jus is juices from the meat. Au jus is juices from the meat. Au jus is not in a packet. Au jus is not in a box. Au jus technically means the juices from the meat. But we just tend to call, like, even when we make our own, you know, amplify it with beef broth or stock or whatever, we still tend to call it au jus. But technically, au jus is simply juices from the meat. So we have that in here. Oh, it's so good. All right, guys. Um, yeah, John, the basics are there. The basics are definitely there for a really delicious, I mean, whether you want to serve it on a sandwich or whether you want to serve it as a pot roast, right? I mean, either way, it's going to be good. So I will have to play around with this a little bit more. And of course, Jeff loves beef, which is why you see so many beef recipes on my website. He doesn't like fish. Why you see? That's why you see very few. I get sick of chicken. So I have to push the chicken. I'm going to do some chicken recipes, though. I like chicken. Like you chicken. like it. I love chicken. Well, you not nah, you don't. I'm love a it. beef guy. I'm going for beef. He, he doesn't love chicken. He says that, but then like he'll say, "Well, I like chicken breast," but he really likes chicken thighs better than chicken breast. He just he just doesn't think he does <laughs> because he thinks he likes chicken breast. But chicken thighs are so much better than chicken breast. 
Denise Carr said, throw a, a slice of tomato, a potato in there to absorb some salt. We did that. We with, learned that doesn't work. <laughs> we tried it with a spaghetti yep. sauce. We had to just add more sauce yeah. to the salty sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we were making like what? Eight gallons of sauce. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what other cuts of beef I uh, it was just brought to my attention that, you know, beef is so expensive. And although the fat in the chuck roast really does do a nice job. But what other types of meat? I mean. What do you mean? I was just thinking, I wonder if I could use a round roast. The round, the round roast would be less expensive, but it tends to hold together even when cooked up into the 200 degrees, it tends to stick together, you know, stay together. So it wouldn't be as much, it would be chunky, not so much shredded. Now, I think you probably could try it. Is there a difference between things that are sold pot roast versus chuck roast? Well, sometimes they'll call, I mean, there is no such thing as a pot roast as far as a cut. Meat. There, there is a Walmart. Um, yeah, well, it's usually going to be like a bottom round or a rump roast or something like that. Or Is that going to break a chuck? It's going to be kind of similar to the round by round roast. Um, yeah, Teresa, they're supposed to, but they don't. I, I've I've tried it; <laughs> it doesn't work. Um, anyway, London broil probably more expensive than the chuck. Maybe not, but that's a it's, flank it's steak or a, a that's a top. Man. That's a top. Um, that's a either a top sirloin or sometimes a flank, although. Probably not a flank anymore because now flanks are really expensive. Um, <laughs> Doyla, a Boston butt would be great if you wanted to do pork. Yeah, you could do it with, with a pork roast too. Hey, that's an idea too. That's not a bad idea. Pork roast because pork is cheaper than beef, I think, right now. Um, well, this was really amazing. I'm kind of excited. Okay. Um, I wonder if, in, so Colleen says, I wonder if instead of salt meat, Cut and marinate in the pepper juice. That would flavor the meat nicely, I would imagine. Yeah, that's an option too, um, especially if you can plan ahead. I don't ever do that. That's my problem. So yeah, I just <laughs> I cook right as I pull it out of the refrigerator. Um, top round is London broil. Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time when you see something called London broil, it's a top round. But it can be other things. It could be... Um, you know, it, it can be a flank steak, but like I said, nowadays flank steaks are pretty popular, so it probably isn't anymore because they go with something cheaper. Um, it could even be a bottom round sometimes. Uh, gravy beef should work okay. I don't know what that is, um, John, but probably because it's if it's made to like really break down and then be served with gravy, which it sounds like gravy beef would be served with gravy, um, it would probably work. Um, Okay, no problem, Pauline, because we are all gonna hop off here. So happy Tuesday, everybody. Sorry that I did such a miscalculation of timing, but that is how we learn. I really thought 10 minutes was gonna be enough time. I was wrong. I thought 15 minutes would surely be enough time. I was wrong. Um, so definitely, I think I would probably hit it at 25 minutes. And the cubes I did were probably about two inches or so, maybe even three inches. They were larger cubes. You could maybe go down on the size and decrease the time some. But the tenderness factor was totally there at the end. It totally was. I also really liked which is going to be a little bit different now. If I do this again and do a 25 minute pressure cook, we're not going to have all that, um, those three pressure build times that I did here. So we're going to have thinner liquid at the end because we're going to have less evaporation. So that's something I'm going to have to think about. And, and I'm, I don't know. I, well, I can't really do anything because I didn't add any liquid except for the pickle juice, which we kind of do want to add that because that's going to get flavor. So I don't know. I'm going to think this one through, try it again, get it right. And then I will certainly post it. So any last questions? Um, yeah, it's good to see real time errors. Yep. Yep. That's, I think it's important to show errors because, you know, like, I, I'll tell you something funny. 
I screwed up. I'm making a, a seafood shell recipe, okay? And it's a combination using the foodie in the oven because I wanted to be able to do it in the foodie, but I also wanted to give people an option for putting it into a casserole dish in case they wanted to serve it. Um, because a seafood stuff shell is kind of a, a racy thing. You might do that for company or something. So um, I wanted to have it also in a casserole. So I'm working through the recipe and it turned out absolutely perfect the second time. Absolutely perfect. So the third time I did it again. And of course, I can't leave well enough alone. I always have to try to push the envelope. So I thought maybe I'll add a touch more tarragon and then I'll add a little bit of lemon to my to my sauce. Lemon's in the ricotta mixture that's with the seafood that goes in the shells. And I ended up overdoing the lemon. It split the sauce. I ended up, uh, I cooked it, I guess, too long. And I ended up, the shrimp and stuff were too rubbery. And I just really total screwed up the third one, right? And I told Jeff, I said, this is, this is really ridiculous, right? Um, I hate failing. I hate failing. And he says, it's not failing, Louise, it's learning. And I said, well, today I don't like learning either <laughs> because I wanted to get that recipe filmed and out the door. But it is, it's just learning. It's just learning. So it's not failure, it's just learning. Of course, I have a whole pan of this stuff in the refrigerator. I don't know what I'm gonna do with because it's too lemony, too tarragony, and it's grainy. And who wants that? Nobody. So it is what it is. All right, guys. Um, Post that ranch recipe. Yeah, man, I should. That is delicious. So I'll play around with that now that I've got these ingredients. I'll play around with that a little bit and get that that ranch dressing mix. And if I wanted to get it like the um, powdered Hidden Valley, I could by adding some citric acid in there, which is you could buy that at the store because we use it for canning all the time. It's going to add that sour punch. So yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to play around with it. Get a little bit closer maybe to the Hidden Valley kind. Um, but I think in this one, I'm just going to leave it just the way I did it. Because you wouldn't want it more puckery. No, it's, that's perfect. It's just a little of the salt. Yeah, just cut down the salt. But I won't even, I'll just let people know that if you can, if you want to use the Hidden Valley Ranch, you're going to have puckery, puckery meat. <laughs> so, because that puckery stuff. Okay. Um, there's a name I haven't seen in a while. L M L M dogs. Jody, hey, Joni. Joni. Right? Joni. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Hey, Joni. And Wayne. Um, Joni does what? Goats? Horses? I know horses. I know horses. I'm not sure about goats. Horses. Thank you, Wayne. I appreciate that. Thank you, Roberto. I appreciate that. Um, But you can buy in a packet. I have, but I'd rather have it for me. Yeah, the native doll. Uh, they're talking about the au jus. I've never had an, a packet of au jus. I, I'm assuming what they would do is extract it from the meat, and then like, they would have to somehow hydrate. dehydrate and concentrate and add a bunch of junk to it. They would have to add a bunch of junk to it. I mean, it yeah. can't just be beef juices. They add preservatives. To it. They've got to add something to it. I mean, they can't just be beef juices dehydrated. It would be. It would cost you five hundred dollars a inch. <laughs> That's probably no real food, like my way might <laughs> too funny um i baked chicken covered in a creamy italian dressing with a lot of worcestershire um liquid smoke lots of ground back on your butter baked chicken covered yeah I've seen things like that. I've never used Worcestershire with chicken, I don't think. I would think that is something you have to beef, beef. Because it's already. Because it's umami. Yeah. It's umami flavor. Um, yeah. Well, is it, it, it comes from sardines or something. I think it, it's basically fishy. Something. There's some fish in it. Yeah, there's some fish in it. All right, guys, listen, we're going to run. And um, it's always so much fun to see you guys and talk to you and chat on Tuesdays. So next Tuesday is our Q&A where I don't cook, but we do sit and chat and have some fun. And some of these conversations that we had tonight, I'd like to continue 
to um, next week because I think they were, they were really interesting about the different kinds of foods in different countries. So John, I'm going to give you an assignment if you're still tuned in. Um, think of some Australian types of foods that I might not even have heard of. And let's chat about those next week because I think it's just so interesting. Yeah, anchovies is what's in it. Yes, anchovies. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's so great. And three-time mommy, this is my first live and I loved it. I'm such a fan. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks so much. Um, oh, I'm so glad you like the cutting board too. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Um, we need a chat room. Mayor, I'm working on that for people who bought the course. I'm working on something there that's kind of cool. So um, anyway, all right. I'm going to say good night now and I'm going to turn my foodie off and um, I don't know how to get rid of the salt. Maybe I'll throw a potato in and see if it works. I don't think it doesn't work though. It's worth it. It won't hurt. It is. It won't hurt. It doesn't work. I think it's just a combination of salt on the beef. Yeah. I'm kind of bummed about it though. because It kind of throws everything off. When things are, when things are not balanced, they are not delicious. But I won't, right? if it was fish or something, I'd be like, just throw it away. Beef. He'll eat it. He'll eat it. We just have to fix it. All right, guys. Love you. See you next Tuesday for Q&A.